Hi everybody, good day to you. 2012 Ford Expedition King Ranch Edition. We just got done with some other work on this uh, a couple videos ago. I did wheel bearings and a power steering gear and uh, I was on hold waiting for tie rods to arrive. Uh, they have since arrived and uh, now we can install these and get this over on the alignment rack. So let's get back to work. By the way, if you missed any of those videos, that's for probably one of two reasons. Uh, either one, you're not subscribed and you did not get the notification that said when I released that video, or you didn't already finish one of those videos, and you will need to go back and finish it before you should proceed with this video. Uh, that being said, if either of those two cases is true, uh, you can remedy that by going down ever so slightly and tapping tap that subscribe button without forgetting to turn on the notification bell. Or you can go to this video's description and you will find a link to the previous videos in this particular series. Okie dokes, wheels are back on, all four of them. We set her down, get those torqued, and uh, when the alignment rack opens up, and uh, whenever that's gonna happen, we'll move on over and then do the wheel alignment on this. Yeah, so after I'm done doing all this other work, we can actually get to the topic of this video. Hooray! So unorganized. God. Oh, it's even organized. Now remember, I just cleaned this toolbox. It's been a singular day. I mean, it's it's piling up. It's starting to get there. I'm on top of it now. Yeah. got the expedition pulled up in the computer let's go ahead and raise this up and this always has to go down on the locks so the rack is level okay the machine is looking for the targets it can't find them oh what are we doing what are we doing did i get them on the right side maybe yes the angle must be wrong on one of these let me see yeah that's a little off let's try it right here you gonna work and it said nope restart procedure it's not seeing that rear camera Hmm, I wonder what the problem could be. Let's go back the other way. Haha, -ha, it's good to go. Let us compensate this. What I mean by that is the lasers take a picture in this orientation. Then what we're gonna do is roll the vehicle back and the lasers will then take a picture in the next orientation. Forgive me, I was being slightly vague. It's actually four cameras and then these little laser red LED devices. It'll take an average of those two and it'll calculate the amount of runout that is in the head in relationship to the wheel. That way you can accurately calculate the actual wheel alignment measurements. And sorry if that fan is bugging you. It's bugging me too. It's loud noisy. Okay, let's roll it back. You guys stop it when it gets here. Come on. Oh, I lost it. One more. There we go. All right. It accepted that position. It's already indicating that we need to roll it back forward. So let's go do it again. 
Now, when we jump in to uh, take one more measurement, when it's all done, it's gonna tell us that there's an error and it, that it's too far out of adjustment. And that is because it's so far out that uh, it can't accurately measure anything. Yeah, look at here, almost three degrees total front toe. That's three degrees of the wheels pointed away from each other. So what we're gonna do is preliminarily adjust that in for positive toe to get this closer to zero. And then we'll just go ahead and restart the entire process. So I went up into the cabin and I straightened out the steering wheel, just kind of eyeballed it. And I'm now eyeballing these wheels to see which one of them is turned and causing the, uh, the problem with the measurements. And I think this one's fairly straight. Let's check this one here. This is our guy. You can see this wheel's kind of pointed out this way some. I think you can see that. Yeah, if you look down the body of the car, you see this wheel's pointed out towards us. So let's adjust this one in. All right, so we go back to our tie rod and we want this wheel to come in, so we need to shorten this. So we're gonna turn this rod in the tightening direction, clockwise. Uh, it's kinda tight. This whole job is tight, like a bunch of tigers. you guys over one more time hey, right about here come on come on go 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 all right there it is we got some green marks and it's gonna turn uh-oh we lost sight of one of the heads we'll just roll it forward a smidgen just a smidge Smidge achieved. Is that enough? Nope. Very carefully. Okay. That worked. Moving back forward. Loud Mustang, another one. It's Mustang week. Uh, how are we looking? Looking good, wonderful. We pull the pins out of the plates. These turn plates are supported by a series of ball bearings, and that's to reduce friction between the machine and the tire for an accurate measurement. All right, let's climb in there. That's the brake pedal depressor, we need that. Huh. Jumping, I'm in. Depress our pedal. It's going to keep the wheels from rolling. If the wheels roll, it's going to uh, ruin our measurements, and that would be bad. We can put it in park now for safety. Starting Z engine. We're going to do left and right sweeps of the steering wheel. Turning left, follows the arrow, and takes a measurement. We go to the right, follows the arrow and takes a measurement. Then we go back to center. Measurement, measurement complete. Let's center our steering wheel visually and there it will stay. Stay, powering down. Beep. Dang, we're really up here. Right, I can jump that high. Whoa. Oh, look at here, the rear toe is out of adjustment. Uh, so is right rear camber, but that's not adjustable without parts or fixing whatever's bent, so we have to ignore that for now. Uh, but we can adjust the rear toe, and then we can adjust the front toe. Reason being, the machine takes the measurements for the front based off of the rear. So if the rears are out, the fronts have to be out. So we've got to set this one up first, then we can move forward to this one. And again, toe is the left and right angle of the tire. 
the way that it moves when you turn your steering wheel that affects the toe and we're looking for this right here an eccentric bolt we've got a bolt that runs through it secures this arm to the frame this washer right here is offset so the bolt is cammed into that washer if you rotate the bolt it'll rotate the washer and since the washer is housed between these two little notches right here it forces the bolts center line to move left or right which then forces this arm to extend in or out thus affecting our left and right angle of the wheel and tire we're here at the right rear tire and the measurement for uh this right rear is positive point three one degrees so it's pointed towards the center line of the vehicle almost one third of one degree that may not sound like a lot but at 70 80 60 miles an hour highway speeds that little bit of tracking not being accurate can have a very drastic effect on the vehicle's handling right now i'm loosening the nut that is uh holding on to that cam eccentric bolt that's loose enough we can adjust it we're gonna go we're gonna turn it counterclockwise on the other side which is gonna bring the thick side of this cam washer over here which is gonna push this that way giving us a negative adjustment oh, I went too far now we're positive 0.2 degrees let's go back the other way Sorry, it was negative 0.2 degrees. We are now at, what can I see? Negative 0 0.06 with one doodly doodly do. Let's keep going. I want positive 0 0.5, 0 0.05 to 0 0.10. And we're stopping at, oh, that's a one, 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 two. Let's back up some. A little too far. Okay, positive 0 0.06, I will accept that. we we'll lock it down and then we'll do the left rear. You can do the right side first or the left side first, it doesn't matter. I prefer to do the side first that is the farthest out of spec. Wrench cheating, I have a wrench cheating click. Yeah, see that? Danger and clear. We're good. I'm gonna grab a hold of the truck and just jostle it up and down a little bit. We do that just to let everything settle again. For example, if the tire is twisted, if this thing were to bind up slightly or stop moving and the tire were to twist, there could be a little bit of friction there affecting just how everything is sitting. So I just like to give it a good shake every now and then just to make sure it's all settled and accurate. Wrench cheating, reverse click again. Yeah, ha ha. went a lot more negative now it's negative 0 0.08 I probably turned it just by moving that nut I wasn't actually paying attention but let's bring her back in negative 0 0.10 positive what do we got there 0 0.03 let's go up a little bit more Positive 0.12. Let's give it a shake real quick. 0 0.11, 0 0.10, 0 0.07. Alright, we're there. 0 0.11. Let's lock this one down. And we'll set up the front and go verify our repairs out on the road. Click. Highly edited due to horrible music. Horrible, horrible music. 
All right, you guys got the gist of it. We see the bottom bar graphs are now 0 0.12, 0 0.11. That's roughly even on both sides. We don't want them exactly parallel. It becomes unstable, but uh, this positive 0.10 is pretty good. Um, all we need to do now is match up the fronts to what the rears were and slightly under. So I'm gonna be shooting for positive 0.08 again on both sides. Uh, at that point, once I get those adjusted, I'll go recheck my steering wheel and make sure it's still vertical. Then we can get this thing down, get back out of the road and get away from this awful music. Sounds like a choking duck. Meh, Hurts my crane brainium. Almost there. A couple more turns. It's hit point zero seven on the negative. So we're shortening it again. Point, uh, here we go. Positive point zero two. A little further, come on. Three, four, five. That's it. Straighten this back out. There we go. Now we can lock down that jam nut. I didn't think you guys could see it. There. Now you can see. Oh, and our moment of silence is over. Next horrible song. Clickage. All right, we have to bring this other side up just ever so slightly from the negatory. Okay, just a wee bit further. Oh, slippage. Come on. There we go. A little bit more. And positive point zero three. A little more. Awesome. Point zero five. Yeah. Time to lock in these nuts. Clickage. Uh, a little more. I want. Whoa, flashlight gravity action. Check it out. I got it. Uh -huh. I got it. You lose, flashlight. You lose. All right, our final numbers are positive 0 0.06, 0 0.05 in the fronts. The rears, we got 0.14 and 0.11. This is as good as it's going to get until we can do something about that, uh, that camber angle on the right rear. Float this thing down, get it off the machine, go for a ride. Truck coming down. We need nice and shiny. Yeah, a little bit over here too. All right, let's get out of here. Before my brain rots out. Maybe it's the heat that's putting my IQ in free fall. I don't know. All right, starting is the engine. Let's go uh, proofread our work. Well, this is nice. I'm pleased to hear that that power steering whine has gone away. The fluid was aerated because there was air in the system because we opened it. I don't know if you guys heard that when I pulled it on the machine or not, but it was making a, a lot of rewinding noises. Nope, there's a little bit of winding. It'll go away as all that air makes its way out of the system, but while it's in there, it's gonna make that, uh, that annoying sound. It's best to just drive them around until they stop doing that. That way your customer doesn't get their car back and then hear it go re everywhere that they go because that'll make them upset. Well, since we rotated those tires and uh, did not replace them, I do still hear some of that choppy humming buzzing noise, but I no longer hear it from up here. I do hear it from the back. However, when I do the left and right turn, I do not hear the very loud helicopter noise. You remember earlier from the first video, I think I heard two or maybe even three different noises and we confirmed wheel bearing noises with the stethoscope. We have eliminated the wheel bearing noises. I do not hear them, but I still do hear those tires singing to us again and they're in the back so there's definitely a change but our guy didn't want to change those tires they still have good tread on them and, and truth be told if they were mine i wouldn't change them either i would just deal with the with the noise until they were worn out now i did rotate them to the back and i cross rotated them so the choppy section of the tire the way it was wearing that was causing the noise that has now been turned around and flippy flop the other way so the leading edge on the chopped areas of the tire those are going to wear off faster and there's a chance it'll eliminate itself as that leading edge wears off. 
It may or may not, but it's, it's at least worth a try. So I did that too. So a recap, the wheel alignment's done. Tires are rotated, crossed to the rear. They've been air pressured, put a power steering rack in it because of that leak. And of course we replaced that super loud left front choppy sounding helicopter noise bearing and the not as bad right front bearing. Yeah, I think that about covers the recap. So uh, we're good to go. All problems have been solved and uh, this vehicle's ready to go back home. And so am I for that matter, because it's going home time for me. That being said, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, let me know about that by tap tapping that like button down below. If you didn't enjoy it, I don't care. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourself a great day. See you guys later. We have accelerated in excess of the speed limit, but I do not hear that noise anymore. Good to go.